Hi friends, so I wanted to share with you just a little excerpt, uh, it's only a few seconds of what Joe Biden says about Paul Ryan being right. He was right to, to be interested in cutting Social Security and Medicare. This is Joe Biden who could end up being the presidential nominee for the Democratic Party. He's a neoliberal and he's a warmonger. Um, but he definitely shows his position, which is economically illiterate. I'm going to attempt to uh, briefly explain why Joe Biden's economically illiterate when he says things like, the only way we can afford to do things is to cut social, social security and Medicare. So I'll just play this little excerpt. It's only about 10 seconds worth. Paul Ryan was correct. When he did the tax code, what's the first thing he decided we had to go after? Social security? And Medicare. Now, we need to do something about Social Security and Medicare. That's the only way you can find room to pay for it. There's nothing to prevent the federal government from creating as much money as it wants and paying it to somebody. That There's nothing to prevent the federal government from creating as much money as it wants and paying it to somebody. The question. Okay, so the, uh, just briefly, and I invite people to learn about um, modern monetary theory. You might have heard me mention that before. It's not a theory. It's just simply a description of the operational reality of a sovereign economy. Uh, and so the, the U.S. is a sovereign economy, and uh, it, can, it, it is monetarily sovereign, so it can afford free health care, it can afford free public education, it can afford uh, to fix infrastructure, it can afford to eliminate student debt, it can afford a whole lot of things. The only constraints are resources. So if you want to find out more, if that sounds like it's too fantastical, um, and by the way, it can afford Social Security. I mean, it's Social Security is something that every sort of Western society has some sort of Social Security. And to cut that is, is absolutely just totally wrong. Um, but you can find out why he's wrong by looking into modern monetary theory. And Stephanie Kelton is Bernie Sanders' economic advisor for the 2020, and she was for 2016. And she is a proponent of modern monetary theory, and she talks about the federal job guarantee, she talks about free, uh, free health care and so forth. That's what Bernie Sanders is all about, and the reason he... he even though he actually um, says some weird things like federal taxes uh, will fund Medicare, that's actually not true. And I think he's feeding into the typical economic myths that are put out there because that's what people are used to saying, used to hearing. And so he's tr um, trying not to sort of um, say things that are um, not the usual mainstream narrative about this, but they're completely economically illiterate to say federal taxes fund Medicare. That's actually not true. It's not necessary. Um, it, it, well, firstly, it's not, it's not true because federal taxes don't fund anything. They're necessary, but they don't fund things like Medicare. It's necessary to tax the rich for ethical reasons, but it's not necessary to tax them so that we can afford free health care or that we can afford free public education or that we can eliminate student debt or that we can fix a broken infrastructure and so forth. It's not necessary to have those, you know, those taxes do not fund those things. That's why MMT is so important, because we've been given this, this lie about the economy, about a, our sovereign economy, and the same thing here in Australia. We're given this lie that a sovereign economy is like a household budget, that the government, is like, the government budget is like a household budget. It's not. When, when you have a household, a household budget, you have to have thing, uh, money coming in, and you have to balance things up, and you have to make sure you have enough money for this and that. You have to balance a budget. With a sovereign economy, the household budget, those sort of things don't, they don't apply. And I'm not going to, I am very, I'm a real novice at this kind of thing, so I'm not going to try and explain it any further than that because there are real experts. There's, a, there's many, many experts uh, talking about modern monetary theory at the present time. You can even find something on uh, the Real News Network just recently with Randall, Randall Ray, um, and he talks to, uh, you know, the Real News Network about this issue. It's just kind of a debate, so you can look at that. You can look at a site that I've um, made called um, Green Party MMT. I'll leave um, a link in the information section. I try to condense 
various talks by experts, including um, Steve Grumbine from Real Progressives. And, uh, you know, I take out the sort of essence of different things and put them in there so you can check that out. Or you can just join Real Progressives on Facebook. That's at Real Progressive, that's singular, on Facebook. And they talk about this almost every day. So um, you can get a really good grounding about MMT there. It, it's so important to understand this issue because um, when you're told over and over again that, you, that we need, in a sovereign economy that we need to tax the rich to be able to afford free health care and these kind of things, that is an economically illiterate statement. When you're told that the government cannot afford free health care or free public education, that is an economically illiterate statement. Um, you know, when you, when you told things like that, that's economically illiterate statements. And we keep, we keep being told that as if the government budget is the same as a household budget. That is totally wrong. Um, I'm not an economist, but there are plenty of expert economists that will explain why that's the case. So when a government is monetarily sovereign, it can afford all those things. The only constraints are resources. And, um, and it explains about inflation and the whole thing. So I invite you to check out those sites I've mentioned and watch them because the people are basically, they're either economically illiterate or they're lying to you. And, and I don't know if Joe Biden is, he's been around for a long time. I do not believe that he does not know the, the go his government is monetarily, his government is monetarily sovereign because he knows, they know, do you notice that they never ever say, um, when, when they say I'm going to spend 770 billion on the military? Do you ever hear anybody, including the mainstream media, asking, well, how are you going to pay for that? Where is this money coming from? Do you notice they never say that? And the reason is, is because the government is monetarily sovereign. There are no constraints on that except for resources. They're, it's monetarily sovereign. It's a currency issuer. So that's why they never, nobody ever asks. Because when it comes to the military, People never ask that question because, and, and the government, you'll never hear any politician asking another politician because basically those two major parties are totally on board with uh, invasions and regime change and all of that, war and so forth. They, they applaud it. So you'll never ever hear them say, how are you going to pay for it? But the minute the question comes up about, say, Medicare for all, like when Bernie Sanders men mentions Medicare for all, the first thing you'll hear somebody say is how are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay for it? That, have you noticed that? Every single time. Um, I just wish that Bernie Sanders would be clear and stop feeding into the economic myths of taxes, funding, spending. When he was doing that debate with Fox News, you know, he was sort of talking about funding Medicare with taxes and so forth. He knows that's not so. And he knows that because he has an economic advisor, Dr. Stephanie Kelton, and you can find her website at stephaniekelton.com. He knows that's not true, but he's, I think, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what his reasons are, but I, I'm sure that in some ways, Stephanie Kelton must sort of uh, have to bite her tongue or, or she may be pulling her hair out when she hears him say that. And she is her economic advisor for 2020. So that Bernie Sanders knows how to pay for things, okay? He knows how to pay for things. I don't agree with him on, on um, a number of things, and I think he's his foreign policy stuff is really problematic, but that's, you know, I've, I've talked about that in other videos, but I'm just talking now about him and his understanding of MMT. That's what that is. MMT is simply a description of the operational reality of a sovereign economy. It's not a theory. It's not something that needs to be impl implemented. They're doing it right now. They're using the sovereign economy the way it was meant to be used, except Actually, they're not using it the way it was meant to be used because they're using it all on the military and invading countries and overthrowing governments left and right and just making the, um, the masses. They've completely forgotten about the working class. They've completely forgotten about... They don't, they don't care about the middle class. I'm not even sure why there are classes. I don't understand how we've got to a point where there's, there's various classes. Uh, I think that's kind of appalling that there's actually classes. But anyway, um, the, uh, the, the government... And wh whoever's in government, doesn't matter if it's Obama or Clinton or, or um, Trump, are spending lots and lots of money, billions and billions. And it's not, by the way, it's not an either or situation. It's not like if you spend that money on the military, then that means you have no money left for anything else. That's what I mean by sovereign economy. There is money for things, although it's really unfortunate they're spending all that money on war and killing people and o overthrowing governments and 
and uh, hegemony in the Middle East and so forth. It's very unfortunate, but that's what the ruling class does now. That's what the oligarchs do. You know, they're a ruling class and they're not interested in the public. They're not interested at all. In fact, they'll, be, they'll probably be very happy when everybody is so disempowered, disenfranchised and run into the ground because they're, they're, not, they're not in the equation anymore. They're not of concern, really. Most politicians are feigning any concern for, you know, they, their actions do not speak to um, actually caring about you and I, right? I don't live in the United States, but it's the same here in Australia. They do that I feel your pain thing that Bill Clinton used to do, but they don't care because we have a sovereign economy here too in Australia and they do not use it on people. They don't, they, they're becoming more and more like the US as time goes by. They don't care about homeless people. They don't care about a lot of things, but they care about uh, corporations. And uh, that's you know how it is here. And they talk about the economy as if it's a household budget. They talk about the government budget like it's a household budget. You know, these economic myths that are they're neoliberal nonsense that these politicians keep putting out. And when you have private conversations with them, like I did with one of our, one of our federal senators here, uh, and I talked to her about, you know, uh, about MMT, she totally understands what I'm talking about. You know, she knows that we have a sovereign economy and we can afford all these things. We don't have to be paying for health insurance in Australia. We used to have free health care here. And to some degree, we have free health care. But it's becoming more and more they're allowing health insurance companies to take over. Their, their aim is to privatize, and they're doing that in the United Kingdom, too. There's been a plan, and I'll, I'll share a little excerpt from Going Underground, but there was a plan right back in the late 80s to privatize the NHS. And basically, it's been, they've been working on that since the late 80s. The only time the world's arguably most efficient health service, the NHS, appears in the news at the moment is perhaps to drum up headlines about post-Brexit medicine shortages, but is the fury over Article 50 covering up a much greater scandal that has implications for everyone. Joining me now is NHS GP Dr. Bob Gill. He's the producer of the film The Great NHS Heist. Bob, thanks for coming back on. This deadline in May, why is it critical for all GPs in this country and for all people in England and Wales? Well, general practice has, like the rest of the NHS, been underfunded since 2010, hidden under the austerity narrative. And what you have is GPs struggling to cope with increased workloads and a, man, a manpower crisis. So the government has engineered a desperate situation within primary care so that they will grab for additional resource. But what is hidden with this additional funding that is coming is a contract change. They want doctors to sign up to a network and what these networks will be will be the building blocks of these American-style organisations. It's an attempt to grab the patient list and the budget that goes with it. OK, but people like Jeremy Corbyn's Shadow Health Secretary, Jonathan, John Ashworth, say, no, this is, uh, there are some good things about it. It integrates. That's why it's called integrated care systems. You think some people are just naive or innocent of the fact that integration means it's much easier for a big healthcare multinational to gobble it up? Well, they've spent years disintegrating the NHS, breaking it up between purchaser and provider. But what the integration that Simon Stevens is proposing is the integration of budgets before they're handed over to the insurance companies. Integration of social care budgets, integration of NHS budgets. But social care, as we know, is mostly means tested and there is also a charging infrastructure. So this will allow backdoor charging within the NHS. With the hostile environment, we have the infrastructure already being laid within the NHS to charge immigrants and supposed health tourists, which are not a burden on the NHS. The amount of money going there is minuscule, but they are putting in place an expensive infrastructure. What for? Because they we're heading down the Letwin plan, which is spelt out back in 88, that we need to extend charging to the point of universality. And this is all part of this complex deception that is underway. And, and just to uh, remind us, that kind of integrated system that you're saying is being snuck in is like the United States one, the most inefficient, most expensive yeah. system with, with millions uh, of people employed in useless administration. 
Well, the, that's right. With the origins go back to 1971, where uh, Edgar Kaiser made a proposal and the Nixon uh, presidency adopted it. And the key point about it is the incentives. The incentives are to provide less medical care for the patient. So within this new network contract uh, being proposed to GPs, there's something called the shared savings scheme. Now, for the first time, they're building in a perverse incentive for your doctor to not to refer you and to deny you care. Now this is a major uh, perversion and toxification potentially of the doctor-patient relationship. And so when the government tells the GPs, thinking of voting right now or signing their uh, documents, when they say 1.8 billion of to taxpayers' money on course for the NHS, the structures are there basically to steal that money. Well, you have. United Health subsidiary Optum already embedded across the NHS. It's, it's there in the administrative systems, the financial systems. They're also looking after patient data. So they are embedded already. They, I mean, they wouldn't say steal, but, uh, but what do you mean is... Well, you have these intermediaries at the heart of the contracting. Which so all is, the money leaks away. Well, potentially they have to put their fees there. And we know that all, at the moment there is a lawsuit in America which is looking to sue United Health for defrauding the taxpayer to the tunes of hundreds of millions of dollars. And that was done through a fraudulent algorithm that they managed to sell to Medicare, the state insurer. So that is, that is in the courts at the moment. This is a potential for industrial scale fraud if we invite these American giant corporates into the NHS. But the other thing about the networks is GPs are being fooled into this is additional funding for potentially existing work. But the reality is there's also a parallel program to significantly shrink the hospital system, cut beds further, cut 30 million outpatient appointments, and this work will dump, be dumped onto the GP. So this will be money with very dangerous strings attached and the loss of control of the patient and the budget that goes with it. So you would certainly, your advice after that diagnosis is definitely to say don't sign the uh, integrated care systems document. But there's also a class element to this, which is the way elites are being creamed off and those people who might be able to be most articulate about what you're talking about. So they go to the private health care before even these final, the final end of the NHS happens. There is a drift, there's an erosion of trust. As you say, mainstream will cover one NHS failure after the other, which are genuinely happening, A&E departments are struggling. So the staff are losing trust with the system, the patients are losing trust, and eventually you will have a middle class drift over to the insurance system, and you have heavy advertising, you have more and more employers offering employer-based insurance. Once a critical mass has drifted over, then there will be the next step, which will be to withdraw more funding from people who can't afford private cover. But the targets of these reforms are not the poor and the sick. They will be abandoned. The targets are the middle classes for the premiums that they will be paying. And then in due course, if they become seriously ill and expensive, the insurers will look for a reason to dump them. And this has been the plan for, I mean, we often talk about government uh, incompetence and lack of organization. You're saying this is a conspiracy going going back decades? Well, there are key documents. You've got Oliver Letwin's uh, document, Britain's Biggest Enterprise, which he wrote for the Centre for Policy Studies back in 1988. You have the Adam Smith Institute document, The Health of Nations, which spell out how to get from a public service to an insurance-based service over time without too many people noticing. Okay, and just briefly, there is some hope, though. Uh, the Blair Brown catastrophe as a PFI new ways are now being sought for policies, say, under a Corbyn government or an opposition government, that those could be uh, broken up, investigated for fraud and for malpractice, and it could be the end for those PFI companies. Well, that's good news if it happens, because PFI has been a key strategy, which was a key tactic necessary to assist the land grab. Without that burden of debt, you couldn't justify a narrative to sell off publicly owned assets and say, well, you know, this land is now spare. We no longer need this hospital that we all publicly own. So we will demolish it and build luxury housing. That argument will be removed. That pressure, that cost pressure of PFI debts needs to be tackled in a way that doesn't pay off the creditors and doesn't leave the taxpayer deeply out of pocket. So this neoliberal scourge 
has been affecting uh, most Western countries, the UK, and um, I don't know what it's like in Canada, but here in Australia, they're gradually, it's, you know, destroying Medicare, death by a thousand cuts. And the Labour Party, who's supposed to be for the people, is just the same as the Liberal Party, really, except that they do things a bit slower. They cut things a bit slower, so you don't notice. But it's happening. So anyway, um, so when Joe Biden uh, says stuff like that, uh, you know, that just gives you an indication of somebody who's either lying about the sovereign economy, lying about because you don't, you know, why would, you know, you never hear him talk about cutting the military budget, do you? And, you know, it's appalling. And so that gives you a little insight into what he's going to be like if he becomes president. You know, Obama had the opportunity in, in the early stages of his presidency to have Medicare for all, and he chose not to. So I hope that anybody who's watching knows that these two major parties are just two wings of the same bird, and they have no interest in you, and don't be fooled by Kamala Harris, who possibly will be the pick. If it's not Joe Biden, it'll be Kamala Harris for the Democratic Party. And um, she is saying all the right things. I've been following on her, her on Twitter for the last seven months or so. She's been saying all the right things, but you know when she gets in office, she's going to be just like a female Obama. Just like a female Obama. She'll be expanding wars. She'll be wanting to invade Venezuela like they, Trump wants to do right now. She'll be wanting to invade Iran. She'll be, she'll be totally on board with every neoliberal policy there is She'll be totally on board with every war that's suggested to her by the CIA and by the military industrial complex. It'll be exactly the same. But you know what's probably going to happen? Because they've spent the last uh, two years going on and on about Russiagate, trying to obfuscate about the, um, the corruption of Hillary Clinton with the pedestrian emails and so forth, and trying to set up this adversarial thing, trying to set up a sort of Russia and China as targets and Putin basically is controlling the weather and is, you know, is some sort of maniacal, omnipresent, omnipotent being. They've pretty much made out that that's what he is, um, some evil satanic person. Um, you know, it's, and it's all nonsense. I mean, you know, he's got his problems, but Russia is not doing all these things that they say they're doing. And look at the United States. I mean, I've shown you that a uh, list of countries that they've invaded or, or attempted to overthrow countries since 1946. They're the ones that are the, the rogue state that are meddling in everything. And the NSA is listening in on everything and so forth. They're the ones that are the problem. But they're all pointing at Russia and everything. And the thing is that this whole Russiagate thing, uh, which there's been no real collusion between Trump and Russia. Like, Trump has plenty of problems. They didn't need to invent the whole Russia thing. But they thought that that would really do it, that he's some kind of Manchurian candidate, that that would really get rid of him. They don't even care if they really get rid of him, as long as they're doing the bidding of the military-industrial complex. And they're just trying to make him look bad. I mean, they're just trying to make him look bad so that it makes them easier to get in. But they're not going to get in because, you know, he's now got a whole lot of ammunition against them with this whole Mueller report and everything. He, they probably handed the next election to him. So they handed the, the two 2016 election to him by uh, p picking the, probably the worst candidate, Hillary Clinton, who is so corrupt, it, it would take ages to list all the problems, and that's the ones we know of with her. And, then, and now this, they've spent two years going on and on about Russiagate, M Rachel Maddow beside herself every evening, uh, frothing at the mouth over Russiagate, and it's just complete nonsense. And anybody on the real left could easily have debunked it all the way through. That's why I never talk about it, because I knew it was nonsense. I just, w you know, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about it. And even though the Mueller reports come out now, they, they don't believe it. They're just a disgrace, the mainstream, corporate-owned mainstream media. Any, they've been making heaps of money from people tuning in, like Rachel Maddow had top ratings all through this Russiagate thing. Now her ratings are dropping. So I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't know what she's doing lately, but I imagine she's trying to keep it going because her ratings are dropping. Anyway, um, so just to give you, just anybody who thinks that Joe Biden mightn't be a problem, wrong. He's a neoliberal warmonger, and he is going to probably um, 
use that economically illiterate myth that you need to cut this and that to be able to afford other things, to cut Medicare and Social Security. You know, it's disgusting. He, he either shouldn't be in government because he, he doesn't understand a sovereign economy and how it, the operational reality of it, or he's just an evil, he's a really unfortunate person who doesn't give a toss. And it's probably, it could be both, or it could be just the latter. I'd say it's probably the latter, because that's what the Democratic, Democratic Party is like. And the Democratic Party, in many ways, would rather lose to a Republican than allow a progressive to uh, get in. They really would. And I'm not, I'm not really a fan of Bernie Sanders because his foreign policy is awful. Uh, but, um, and he's wishy-washy on Israel uh, and all of that. He's all over the place with that. You don't know where he's going to land next time he talks, but he does have the whole econ the sovereign economy thing if he just stops saying federal taxes fund spending, you know, fund will fund Medicare. If he just stops saying those things that he knows are not true, but his idea about the economy um, is quite a good one. And uh, you might have seen that um, uh, video that he put out about, uh, I think it was called Lordsville or something. Lordstown, sorry. Lordstown is, um, you know, is one of those, I think one of those towns that has been suffering terribly with um, shutdowns of, um, you know, Ford or something, shutdowns basically of uh, industry. And there's a lot of people, I guess, are unemployed and suffering, but that's all over the country. And so Bernie Sanders, uh, I'll show you this little video. It's quite a good one. At one time, this is what built the middle class during the Industrial Revolution. This area is in trouble, and it's up to us, the people, to fight back. I'm Chucky Dennison. I'm from Lake Milton, Ohio. This is my third plant I've seen close, and I do not plan to transfer again. I plan to stay here and fight back by organizing and transforming the political system from the ground up and reclaim the White House. Trump lied to Ohio. He hasn't done one thing to lift a finger. He came to this area and told people, do not sell your homes, I'm bringing the jobs back. And weeks after that is when they announced the plant closing. Let me tell you folks in Ohio and in this area, don't sell your house. A large American factory stopped production today after more than half a century. 1,600 workers at the General Motors plant in Lordstown, Ohio, are affected by this. The plant is in Trumbull County, a county that voted for President Obama and then for President Trump. It's not only devastating to the employees who work for that plant, but the families. It affects the whole entire area. Tax revenue, infrastructure, down to the schools. Even the little children in school, their best friends disappear because they're uprooted and have to move. The tire factories are gone, the steel mills are gone. This was all that this area had left. If you drive down our roads now, and everyone has got potholes. He came here and lied to these people. I didn't buy it, but many people did because they were hanging on to hope. They were hoping that he would do something, but he did the opposite. Trump gave General Motors $700 million in federal contracts. I mean, this is happening all over this nation with all kinds of corporations. Not only are you hurting workers, communities, but the children and future generations. And it needs to stop now. Today I say to Donald Trump, you know, you are a really tough guy and you are prepared to shut down the federal government and deny hundreds of thousands of workers a paycheck. Well, let's see how tough you are. Tell General Motors today, no more federal contracts until they deal with Lordstown. Let's see how tough you are. Today, our message to General Motors and the other corporations is that you cannot continue to treat your employees with disdain and contempt. And if you are not a good and responsible corporate citizen, do not think that you will get federal contracts. Bernie, we need you. We do. We need you. And we have your back. And I know you got ours. If we can get you elected, man, we're going to have the resources to transform America. So, um, you know, it, um, 
It's too bad that his foreign policy is so shot, really. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say much more about that. I've, I've said other things. I've, I've, said, I've done a couple of videos on Bernie Sanders. You can check them out if you want. But um, anyway, that's all I wanted to say to is just to, you know, that Joe Biden, um, you can see that he's going to be a real problem. Kamala Harris is going to be a real problem. Um, so just expect it'll just be Obama 2.0, whoever gets in. But I, I think that they've blown it with this whole Russiagate thing for the last couple of years and that probably Trump will get back in. I mean, it's appalling, really. And then he's going to he's going to see that as some sort of mandate to just go all out and uh, do awful, awful things. It's it's frightening, really. Um, if I was if I was living there and I could move to another country, I would. I don't know. I, I would suggest if if people are able to, to move away from there, um, you should do it probably. Before, you know, like if he gets in again. It's going to be bad enough if a Democrat gets in, and forget the Greens. They don't even they t don't pay attention to MMT. They 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 push right up against it like they just don't want to know, which is really sad because there are people in the Democratic Party now that are understanding it, like Acacia Cortez, and she's not very clear when she talks about it, but she understands it, right? Um, I'm not a fan of her either because she's back and forward on on she's going to be all over the place with foreign policy too. It seems if you join that party, you kind of ha in some ways have to be. And Tulsi Gabbard, I've, I've done videos about her and her flying under the radar about Israel. So anyway, um, what I would like you to take from this is please think about looking into MMT. It's becoming mainstream now, and it's, it's vitally important that anybody who lives in a sovereign economy like Australia, Canada, the UK, the United States and so forth, to, to look into this because you're, we're being fed economically illiterate myths that, the household, that a household budget is like a government budget, like a, a government budget, budget is like a household budget, and it is not. And we're being fed lies that they can't afford to pay for Medicare and stuff like that, and that they need to cut different things to be able to afford to pay for it, or that they need to tax the rich to be, or corporations to be able to afford to pay for it. That is, they are lies, economically illiterate lies, and we need to understand MMT so that we can say, you're lying. You're lying to us, and now you're going to do what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be serving the public, your public servants, and you're going to stop lying that you can't afford this and that and start doing what you should be doing. Because they certainly don't say those sort of things like we can't afford to increase military budget. You'll never hear them say that. That's because they know how to use a sovereign economy when they, when they want to. And then they, when they don't want to, that's when they start saying we can't afford it or we need to tax the rich. Okay, well, that's all I wanted to say. So thanks so much for watching. Learn MMT. Please check out those sites I mentioned. My name is Trish Roberts, and please, um, if you like the content, please leave, please click the like button, please subscribe and click the notifications bell, otherwise you don't receive notifications when I drop a video. And um, please leave comments, I always enjoy comments. So thanks so much for watching, till next time, bye for now.